Hey guys, this is Oshie and this is going to be a reading for episode 6 and oh my god, what an episode! <laughs> I mean, anybody can say anything about this series, but they can't say that things are not moving quickly. I mean, unfortunately I knew uh, before the episode that there's gonna be change, timeline change and new actresses and actors are gonna be presented because when I did the first uh, reading, I had to check the names uh, on IMDb and then I saw, you know, the young blah, 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 and the queen, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, ah, oh, damn. And, you know, I was kind of mad about it, knowing that uh, the actresses are going to change because I really like the actress who plays the younger version of the princess, but I kind of like the older version as well. And they're similar enough. The, uh, the other ones still have that cat-like feature. So, you know, it's not a big change. Uh, the queen is really good and uh, who else? I mean, <laughs> but it's kind of weird that Sir Christoph is, you know, the same one. And it's like uh, everybody else got older, only him remained the same. So, I mean, I understand that he wasn't that young when, the, uh, you know, he entered the picture. But it's kind of funny that, you know, he wasn't aged. Um, but oh well, good for the actor. I mean, <laughs> he managed to keep his part. But uh, wow. So yeah, I definitely want to check on Sir Christoph because he's an asshole. I'm sorry to say that, but he is the typical guy or girl, doesn't matter. You know, he's a typical um, human being who can't handle rejection because, you know, he was in love with the princess until that very point when she said no, pretty much, not entirely to him, but to the way he imagined the future. And then right now he's like, oh, she's da, 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 you know, calling her, see you next Tuesday and stuff like that. So that's, oh God, I hate when someone does that. So let's start with the dearest Sir Christoph, whose name is pretty much the only one that I learned because it's an easy one. <laughs> but, a lot of things happened and oh my god you guys <laughs> i don't know i'm i know it's not that i wasn't paying attention but because then i knew that you know or i was expecting that the princess and the queen is going to be the main key players in the whole thing i was kind of expecting the king to die <laughs> you know before this jump in time and so when he walked into the room and he was all like hey how, how is everybody oh look at me i have a new grandson i was like oh my god you're still alive <laughs> because honestly he was in such a shitty shape at the end of the fifth episode and he was doing so much better um the beginning of this one oh, look at that for christoph Sir Christoph, sorry. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely pulling cards for the king now. Um, but yeah, let's stick to one thing because then I'm gonna start jumping all over the place and the, the reading is gonna make no sense. I mean, because the reading will try to keep up with my thoughts, so, uh, so it's not gonna reflect what I'm talking about. Let's have one more for Sir Christoph, please who pretty much did what most of us expected, you know. He pledged alliance and loyalty to the queen, and now they are best buddies and whatever, which is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. Okay, oh, what? and we had the chariot. So let's see, so he is definitely still in that, in that everything is fine and, and all is well and we're so happy. We found our place and, you know, we are back in our, I don't know why I'm using Prolo. So, you know, he's, he, he, he found his place again because he has someone he can serve. Because he's that typical type of person who needs someone that, you know, they can serve. They cannot live their life for their own, I don't even know, just for their own. It, there are certain people and he's definitely that type which can be good you know if he's uh, serving a, a just cause for example but we can see that he cannot handle the fact that he's human so he's pretty much 
doing shitty things just to prove that he's on the right side. And what I mean by that is that when the children were, you know, practicing and there were some um, remarks about who the father is, mm, let me guess, there's two supposed parents with blonde hair and then there's a, an older knight or captain or whatever his rank is. <laughs> and the children all have dark hair when the, the captain has dark hair. Wow, it's, it's so surprising that people are talking. Um, but yeah, I, you know, provoking the father through the child, child is, is, is such a shitty thing to do. And I, I really don't appreciate when ad adults are playing games involving children and especially power plays like that. And he definitely did that without any problems. So as much as he seemed like a, an, ooh, look at him, he's a knight, uh, and oh, he's so handsome and all that shit uh, at the beginning. Honestly, I hope I never come across anyone like him because I would fall for someone like him, obviously, because he's that charming, he's that noble looking and whatever, but he's a shitty person. Uh, yeah, so, and still, I still feel that the Ace of Spears is kind of feels like a war. You know, like a confrontation. It's not just, a, uh, I mean, a war or a confrontation issue is a passion at the beginning of something. And it's going to come out of not necessarily boredom, but not missed opportunities and kind of, mm, I kind of feel like this Four of Cups here, uh, for him, it has a little bit of a tower. Um, shadow looming over and what I mean by that is he's gonna self-sabotage because he he can pretend that he doesn't feel anything for the princess but that's you know you, you're not this um, mean to other people and you're not you know you don't talk about people in the way that he talks about the princess if you don't have still feelings for them so there's obviously that there's something there and i think that those feelings that he's not facing and that's his biggest problem to be honest not never really facing his problems because you know he would have unalived himself instead of just facing the consequences of his actions, which I'm not judging because, you know, it, it was an overwhelming thing to experience. I just think that he didn't come out um, with a lot of lessons learned. Maybe because of the influence of the queen, who knows? But, you know, after a while you need to take some responsibility for your own actions. So, but I still think that, you know, he's kind of, in this, oh, I know what my purpose is, everything is fine, but that's passing. And what's coming is a moment or a period where he's gonna self-sabotage, he's gonna um, do something that will um, shock a little his word at least, and there's gonna be that confrontation. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a physical one, but because he's a knight and what his role is, I would say that there's going to be some sort of a physical or passionate uh, confrontation or argument coming that will change a lot of things for him. And that could be with the princess because how things ended, so there's not a lot of other people to be confronted with. Mm. Or... Hmm, who else? I don't even know. I don't think the king would, wouldn't do that. The king is too diplomatic for that. But yeah, there's gonna be so. I mean, I'm not necessarily... I don't necessarily know what he's gonna pick a fight with, but or whom he's gonna pick a fight with, but he's gonna do that. Because all the feelings that he's trying to, you know, bubble, um, trying to hide and pretty much just pretend isn't, it doesn't exist, it, it's gonna bubble up to the surface after a while. Uh, okay, next one is the king, but before the king, Jesus Christ, the Princess Egan, that's his name. The one who jerked off in the window. Oh my god, I mean, he's supposed to be a king, and I know he's young and he's a teenage boy, but Jesus, I'm too old for teenagers, I guess. Uh, let's see what the king, oh, mm, I don't want this all. Temperance, yes. Ah, uh, okay. 
let's let's not let's not overcomplicate things. Three cards uh, three, for three cards reading. So temperance. I uh, kind of you know. I kind of feel like that a lot of uh, people in the in the court, court doesn't really appreciate how much diplomatic effort goes into everything that the king does. You know, he had that those moments where he was like, "Oh, I want a war because you know, you know, my name is not gonna be remembered." But I think that that was one of his weakest moments because when he's pretty much okay physically, at least health wise, he's always trying to mediate things because he knows how important peace is for the realm and i i know that i didn't give him enough credit for what he's actually trying to do because you know there's a lot of people bitching about how he's willing to not see certain things but that willingness to not see certain things might it it doesn't just come from necessarily a place of oh i you know these are my children and i'm blind when it comes to them that's part of it obviously because he actually loves his children uh or you know he's older for sure but i do think that you know he loves everyone equally because he was hoping that the fighting boys when they were practicing and i would say that that this is uh kind of representing that that plus the environment that he's constantly in is you know all the meddling all the political power plays that everyone is always arguing you never know who's on whose side that's a very tough position to be in for especially for many many years and ruling a kingdom and even though my personal you know feelings about kings and kingdoms and how society is structured is a completely different one than how this show operates uh, or maybe not, who knows. There's a lot of, um, you know, tempering and, and balancing goes into being a king. And he's doing that for a while now. And there's going to be, you know, we have a celebration. And, and in this case, I would say there's going to be a wedding that will change things. And there was a proposal on the princess's part, which the queen was like, oh, no, no even though it could have solved a lot of problems. But the queen has thrust issues for sure, and she's going to look at her as well. Uh, so I'm thinking that this wedding might be a solution. So he might, he might be the one who's going to find a sort of, not necessarily a wedding, but... Um, a union of some sort that will solve all these, you know, petty arguments. That's one thing. Or, uh, you know, the petty arguments and all the uh, things are going to lead into a conflict at a wedding. And we know how Game of Thrones and the House of Dragon pro so far deals with celebration. There's always someone dying there. So, uh, uh, Four of Spears, uh, Four of Wands card, uh, ne doesn't necessarily mean happiness and you know celebration in this uh, context so we will see but there's gonna be some sort of a union or celebration that he i i i would think that he hopes to uh, that he can you know resolve these issues okay good i just checked but i'm recording because that would suck if i didn't Okay, let's see. Let's get to the queen then. Because the queen proved to be as naive in certain aspect as she looks at the king, and which was kind of funny in a way that, not in a haha -ha funny, but in a hmm, you're bitching about the king being naive and, you know, um, getting influenced by people that he shouldn't be influenced by. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not talking about uh, her father because you could see that that still, that lost confidence, the king's lost confidence in her father still hurts her, obviously. But that feeling makes her blind to see that the king is 
most of the time doing things well. I do because you know you could see that she's she thinks that she's better or would be better or I don't know smarter or whatever than the king. But then by the end of the the episode, she had to realize that she was used in a way that she was not expected because she that guy um the princess's lover's brother i guess you know the one with the the cane i don't know i don't know names he's just a sneaky slimy one he was then the first time they met you know with the you know with the queen you know he was a small slimy one so we're gonna call him slimy mr Sli sir slimy that's a good thing so Sir Slimy was like, oh, but you really wished for this to happen. And then she was like, but I didn't say that. And then, uh, you know, sometimes what you imply is enough. Or sometimes you forgetting who you are as an entity. You know, she bitched about certain things. And she, I guess, uh, based on her reaction, assumed that it was just bitching about or bitching to a loyal servant, but she forgot or didn't realize or managed to not see, just like the king, that this guy was really trying to use her, you know. I mean, he wasn't just there to admire the flowers and stuff like that. And yeah, that was that was a hard pill, I guess, for the queen. Because yeah, we had the ten, you know, we have the Ten of Cups, which is uh, Interestingly, it represents a moment when Ned Stark and his wife, Catherine, no? Kathleen, Catherine, Catherine, right? Oh my god, it's like I said, I'm, I'm not good with names. When they are in their uh, chambers and everything is fine, and these candles represent their children, so it could be, uh, represent a very intimate, happy family moment. But I kind of feel like Mm, it's it's more about the children, but I mean, I mean, it's I'm not doing anything necessarily with the spread, but I still kind of feel that this is the problem that she's you know that um, she's lacking this because with the king they have a cordial kind of polite so to speak, relationship, but it's not equal, it's not based on love, it's not, I don't even know, you know, it, it was arranged in a way that the king didn't realize at first, and then when, by the time he did, things were already happening, and, you know, she was forced into this, blah, 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 blah. So it's not like it's the greatest love story of all time. But they still could have made it happen. And she was trying hard, I think, at the beginning. But she let other people, you know, put her on the defense even. I think that's the biggest problem between the queen and the princess is that the queen doesn't for a second entertain the idea that the princess actually doesn't want to hurt her or her children. Because she's like, nope, my father said she's gonna come after me, so she's gonna come after me, even though, you know, it might not have happened. And what I was thinking that it's kind of similar to how Voldemort created Harry as an, as the enemy, as the one who will, you know, make her f uh, him uh, fall, because if he would have ignored the prophecy, nothing would have happened, but he took it too seriously. And I think the queen is doing the exact same thing, just like kind of Cersei was doing, that everybody is an enemy and we, we need to crush them before they crush us. And I'm not saying I don't understand that because, you know, you're the queen. But still, there could have been a chance for for friendship, for being... Um, sort of, so we're having that support system. Because definitely, you know, there, she really needs to be more diplomatic in some way. Because these cards are actually, you know, if you just look at them, these are very positive cards. It should indicate a very happy family moment, celebrations with f friends and family, and and slow positive changes. 
I just currently don't see how that's going to happen. I mean, that's not saying it's not. I just don't see. Because for that to happen, uh, that wedding should have happened between the children, but I don't think that's going to. Or, you know, some sort of other celebration. I mean, the celebration is coming up with the, uh, the same as that came up with the king. So it could be that one of their children is going to get married. And that's going to be some sort of a, a positive change. But she definitely needs to learn some patience as well. Interesting. So yeah, I don't know what this is all about, but it's very interesting. We will see. Okay, let's check the princess, I guess. And then obviously Damon, because <laughs> guess who's not married anymore? But has... And has only... Um, female children because you know that's always a good thing when male children are more important in that aspect but yeah i'll bitch about that later <laughs> let's check on the princess who is a mom now and the first scene was like okay we're giving birth and i kind of like can i just say how much i appreciated that that remark when he was um she was walking back with um, her husband and, you know, she was like, thanks for, you know, naming my child. And then he was like, oh, but can I have some, you know, some say in the matter of uh, our children's life or whatever, something like that. And she was like, uh, only one of us is bleeding. And, <laughs> and then you can actually see the bloody uh, footprint behind her. And I was like, yes, please. Thank you. She just gave birth which was also a very shitty move on the queen's part to immediately demand to see the child because I don't know why she was acting all surprised that she was coming with, you know, the baby because I wouldn't give my newborn, you know, freshly born baby to someone that I perceive as an enemy in any way because you could see how nervous she was when the queen held the baby and... Or held the baby and you know i was like oh well, she's not gonna hurt the baby right i mean there's too many people are like there's green there's the king like please don't because I, I don't think i could have handled a newborn baby being hurt in that moment because i'm like nah i know it's politics and everything and there's a reason for it but please don't but then fortunately it didn't happen okay um, okay Three of Cups, Two of Cups, well, Three of Cups is friendship and because we had that with the Queen, it's so interesting that the cards are insisting on them being allies and, or maybe not, it's just that something, you know, I'm getting from the repeated card. Two of Cups, equal partners in some way, uh, well, I don't think it's, I mean, um, the the father of her children died, right? I mean, I don't know. Did we see specifically that he died? Because, okay, things were falling down. Everything was on fire. There was a lot of, you know, burnt skeletons. But I don't specifically remember. But I'm not saying I, I you know, I wasn't blinking when they showed <laughs> his body. But, you know. People are not dead until you actually see them dead. And it depends on the show, because if it's supernatural, then even in that case, they are not dead. Ah, oh, supernatural would have been so much fun doing readings with with the deck, if that would have been a thing. Ah, oh. man, that would have been so cool. But yeah, let's not think about supernatural. Let's think about the princess. So yeah, I don't think that this is about him because he's most likely dead. It's just kind of, nah, it's just so mean. But it still signifies an equal partnership. It doesn't have to be. Ah, lol, I put this one back and the, the, I'm not shuffling on camera, so I don't think you saw, but because I didn't feel like, you know, this was the card, but it, this is the card. So judgment, judgment is coming. So it could be that the loss of, uh, that commander, you know, like the father of her children, 
is going to come, that she's going to raise some hell. The Empress is not showing up again, so it's very interesting that we moved on from her Significator card a little. I mean, obviously. But um, 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 it's very interesting that the Three of Cups says friendship, celebration, support system is showing up, you know. But it also could mean that because we have the judgment here that, you know, you're you're evalu evaluating things, you're, you're judging your relationships. And I always look at the judgment card is facing what made you who you are today, accepting your shadow self, not shying away from the mistakes you made, but uh, embracing all the good things that you did as well, finally leveling up because you can integrate all these. And, you know, pain and loss can definitely make you act a certain way. And I kind of feel like that she's bringing judgment because of what's happening, you know, because she's going to be mad, obviously, for a good reason. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's see Damon. Because that was, I mean, they, you know, he went with the predictable wife in a way because, you know, she was pretty, she was interesting, she wasn't boring. So obviously that was kind of like a good match. I, the, her death was like, I understand in that moment that you don't want to live if your child doesn't necessarily, you know, survive. But she had other two other daughters, so plus the child might have lived. So that was an interesting choice to die like that. And it shows how powerful the bond between them was. I think they, they pretty much do it to show that the dragon will do anything if uh, they are bonded to you because they were talking about that with the children, so it was highlighted. So obviously there's going to be something in the future. And now we have a dragon free. The oldest, I think, what she said in the realm. So who's going to get that? The blondie blondie guy, like a little, little, uh, not heir, but little prince, a Egan, I know, or something like that. The e, e, prince, e prince, you know. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Damon, okay, I need to name things. Uh, I'm so glad that he his hair is not uh, Draco Malfoy uh, hair anymore because that was kind of like too much of a, you know, like this could be an alternative universe when Draco Malfoy grows up to be a Targaryen. So I'm like, <laughs> let's not do that. Okay, and he matured some for sure, but, you know, he's single, ready to mingle. <laughs> And in a way, we don't know what the princess is going to do. Ah, oh, we're back to the the two of spears, the two of wands, the choice, and we're back with the princess. So there is again. He has a lot of things that he can consider right now, which is true. You know, move back, move away, accept the offer that they were presented before. His wife died. There's a lot of options that he can consider, but there is a time he's going to move on from just considering different options and actually make a choice. But I kind of can't, you know, I can't help to look at this and be like, oh, we're going back for the princess again. <laughs> Which, you know, if... Uh, let's ignore the incest part because, you know, I can't with these two if they are, oh, you know, if I'm thinking about that. <laughs> If I'm ignoring that, because this show tends to ignore it. Um, if they have a child that's going to be blonde, then, you know, if it's a boy, then no one can uh, bitch about bloodline and whatnot. Even though it's, it's very, very good for a bloodline to get some new genes in after a while. But hey. Ooh, okay. Okay, so he has a tower and it's because it's, this is a show, you know, it's not a real person. 
And we're kind of, you know, not looking into who they are and not giving advice. It's pretty much, that's why I would say the tower can be something that he is bringing into the picture. You know, he's bringing into the loss of the crown, um, a, pro a power structure falling apart. Because if he goes after the princess and it doesn't happen, there could be, you know, something that happens where all his life falls apart. But it doesn't really strikes me as a type who couldn't handle big changes like that because he, he already had those quite a few times. So I would say that this is more about just like the judgment card with the princess. We have the tower with him and those two all can, you know, work together. So I'm kind of sensing or feeling, uh, you know, not because of the cards, but because how a show typically works, that they definitely are going to do something together. You know, the princess and demon are back. If nothing more than that ally uh, that the two of cups suggested, because they are equal to each other, no matter what happened. They are very, very similar people. And I don't think Damon can actually respect anybody else the way that he's respecting her, the princess. Because I'm not saying that he didn't love his, his wife, because I, you know, I do think he did in his own way. But it wasn't the same because he was not treating her equal. Because when she said that, you know, she wants to go back and she wants to raise her children in, in places where they are supported and with, they are amongst family, he pretty much ignored her. So he was definitely the one making decisions and not... So their uh, relationship wasn't an actual partnership in a way. But with the princess, it would be because they are just too similar, you know, which is a really like really really interesting. And then, you know, everybody's single, so. <laughs> but I really do enjoy these. Like there's six episodes, but I really do enjoy them. There's a lot of things happening, so I think the and but. I think they're so far they are done well. There's a lot of places, a lot of key players at place. There's a lot of changes are happening, but so far the writers and um, and the director, you know, they are they are keeping up with what they laid on the table. So so far I don't feel like they forget about the um, storyline or something like that, which happened in Game of Thrones at least once. At least once, no, at least twice, which I'm... Yeah, not at the beginning, not at the end, it's kind of in the beginning, but that's a different show. So let's just pull up three cards for Ace of Swords. There's something, someone will have... Hmm, or, you know, the sword is, can, you know, signify justice as well. But there's some clarity coming. Oh, things will, you know, pick up with the Eight of Wands, Eight of Spears. Someone will have, a, because it, this is just a general for the, I don't know, next, what's happening. Uh, if we have the Temperance and the Six of Cups, I, I don't feel like it's the one that I'm supposed to get. So, it's more about, it's not necessarily about of one person it's about people getting getting clarity on certain things and that start um, a catalyst so to speak you know things will start to move and change and go certain places even though it wasn't a slow paced show at all and we have a nine of swords which is all about nightmares and sleepless nights and overthinking and 
you know, like a lot of, lot of um, um, political plays. You know, a lot of times when people are just not sure about what they are supposed to think and they overthink and they worry and there's a lot of anxiety, which is the show, so obviously. <laughs> but instead of, you know, uh, moving towards a calmer times, we're moving towards a more anxious and darker times and people in jail, I guess. Because with this deck, we can take things literally as well which is so much fun. It's oh, I, I really enjoy that. Well, yeah, this was episode six, Ace of Spheres. There's going to be a war. There's a war coming, not winter. There's a war coming. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, do let me know, especially Lizzie, uh, what you think. Uh, if, you know, if you're not watching, I must admit you're not watching these readings, but if you're watching these uh, and you're watching the show, what do you think? Like, what do you think? Where where are we going with everything? Uh, what what do you think the end game of the show is? I'm so curious because I have I don't think I've I've stopped and thought about it because I don't want to. I like being getting surprised, so I'm not doing that. But yeah, let's let's leave this one here for the picture. <laughs> and yeah, see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Do all the YouTube things and see you in the next one. Bye.